Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and we're continuing with our series of videos to help you improve your chess game. Uh, the idea for today's video comes from one of my students, Dave. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was doing my fourth 20-minute exercise, and I randomly, I think it, it must have been April 21st, because I picked out uh, game four in the candidates library here on the ICC, and I picked out the 21st move. So... I picked out the game Nepo Grishik, and after the 21st, Black's 21st move, we had this position. Maybe it was April 22nd, so I was going for White's 22nd move. So I, I spent the whole video analyzing this position. And when Dave was watching the video, early in the video, I kept showing all these lines where this bishop would cause problems for this rook, because the rook doesn't have a lot of safe squares along the line. So for instance, if white plays something like knight to e4, blocking the rook in, let's ask Stockfish to play black. We'll bring up our buddy Stockfish 11 to help us with the video. Right, so now black can play bishop d7, and if white tries to play bishop h6, <clears throat> bishop takes a4, hits this pawn. He's also threading the bishop, winning material. But if white doesn't take the rook, if he tries to save his rook, then when black saves his rook and attacks the pawn, he's also threatening to, like, trap the rook. And this is completely winning for, for black. And in fact, Stockfish, you could see below, says the white's best move is to sack his knight for two pawns just to get out of that predicament. All right, so back to the game. Um, so here I am going through these lines, and... Uh, Dave's saying to himself, well, why don't you just take that bishop? If it's such a good bishop and he's causing all these problems on the white squares, why don't you take that? And then he said later in the video, I briefly explained that after knight takes e6, then after rook takes, that black has a good knight against a bad bishop endgame, and this looks kind of bad for white. So Dave said, all right, well, that explains it, and you went into a little bit of detail, but he said you really could have spent a whole video talking about this position and why it's a good knight against the bad bishop. So I said, okay, so here's that video. Let's take a look. All right, so we're assuming here that white's going to play knight takes e6. Not a good move, but that's the purpose of the video. And now with the discovered attack on the rook, even though black has three ways to take back on e6, he's going to take with the rook. Okay, well, already this looks really bad for white, but if you're not a good player, you know, you might not see that right here. In fact, some of my students like to come up with what I call hand-waving, which is making moves on general principles instead of analysis, and they might say something like, well, now that we're in an endgame where there's pawns on both sides of the board, and endgames with pawns on both sides of the board, bishops are better than knights, so therefore white should have a good endgame here. Okay, well, let's look at the specifics, and we'll use our friend Stockfish. I'll leave the board a little smaller, and we can see Stockfish's analysis. So right now, Black's threatening to take that pawn. White can't let him do it. For instance, let's say White counterattacks with g4. Black has en passant, which gives him a tempo. If White takes back with the pawn, Black simply plays rook takes e5. Black has six pawns against White's five. Black's rooks dominate the center. Black has... <clears throat> potential past pawns, maybe even on both sides of the board, depending on how it gets played. And you can see the evaluation here is minus 6.7. Well, you have to be greater than minus 1 for black to be possibly winning, and Stockfish says this is completely losing that. You can't lose the pawn. It gives a couple moves. We'll play a couple moves. Rook takes, rook takes, bishop f4, rook e2 check, king g1. Now, Black is saying, I don't need to take that pawn. It won't run away. Knight d6, he says, if you want to give up your nice bishop, it's nice now. It wasn't nice before he lost the pawn. If you want to give your nice bishop for that knight and trade off when you're losing and undouble my pawns, that'd be great. King f1, rook takes c2. King e1, rook takes c3. Black's just mopping up all the pawns. All right, let's go back to the game. Okay, so we're assuming knight takes, rook takes, and we're assuming... Because this counterattack doesn't work, we're assuming white's just going to save the pawn. So let's look at all three ways he can save the pawn. 
He can play rook on 4 to e4. He can play bishop f4. He could play f4. All right, so let's start with f4. f4. That looks reasonable. Why guard the pawn with your pieces and tie down your pieces when you can guard it with a pawn? All right, well, black's still got a lot of good things going for him here. This knight on f5 is very strong. For instance, now that the f pawn has moved up to f4, the g pawn can never go up to g4 to drive the knight away. Let's say black does nothing. And white plays g4 because of h takes g on passant. Check. And now there's no pawn that will ever get rid of that knight. There's no bishop that could attack the knight. There's no knight. So the only piece that could get that knight off that square would be a rook. And if worse comes to worse, black can guard it with a pawn. So this kind of position, even if white could successfully get g4 in, is going to be monstrously good for black. On the other hand, look at white's bishop. It's blocked on both the diagonals where he's coming down the board. And he, he can't play c4 because that would permanently lose his rook on a4. There'd be no way to get it back in the game. And meanwhile, the bishop's blocked by this pawn on f4. It's perfectly good as a guard for that pawn, but other than that, that's all the bishop can sit there and do. Later, black could even think about playing f6, and white can never take because rook takes rook. So again, let's let, let's let Stockfish play both sides here a little bit and show you how good black's game is. All right, so we, we can see the evaluation here is minus 2.3. That should be enough to win, but it's not easy at 2.3. It gives rook a, e4, getting that rook back into the game. Rook d8, grabbing the open file. That poor bishop is kind of helpless here. Bishop c1, they give us the best move. For black, they give rook g6, now getting that rook attacking over here. White simply guards the second rank. Black fixes this pawn on a3 where it can be a target and it blocks in the bishop. We can see this is a really, really bad bishop. He's got pawns of the same color on both diagonals now, and he only has two diagonals left, and all those squares are being slowly taken away. For instance, suppose white tries to play bishop e3 here. Black can simply do nothing, but he could also even take that bad bishop and get into the seventh rank with unstoppable threats. Knight takes... Rook takes, rook d2. If he plays rook on 3 to d2, rook takes, rook takes, rook g3. And here goes those pawns starting to fall now. And white has no counterplay. If he plays f, f5 and e6, the black king is going to be in the, in the area. For instance, f5, rook takes c3, e6, f takes e, f takes e. King f8, and... Now let's say rook e4, rook takes a3, rook takes h4, rook a2, blacks up a pawn. The pawn on e6 is actually weak even though it's a passed pawn. This pawn on c2, he can't really afford to lose it and let this avalanche come down. But he can't sit there with his rook on c4 guarding it either. So they give c4, rook c2. Rook h8 check, king e7, rook c8. Now we're going to trade a good pawn for a doubled pawn. King takes e6, rook takes c7, rook takes c4. Here's these three connected pass pawns. <clears throat> and even if white says, well, I can get two connected pass pawns, let's have a race. The engine says the race goes to black, b5. What can white play? Let's say he plays g4, a3. If he puts the rook behind the pawn, black says, would you like to trade? I can get a queen much faster and my king can stop your pawns. And Stockfish now says it's mate in 10. All right, back to the game again. So knight takes, pawn takes. We're looking at f4. Oh, sorry, not pawn takes. Force of habit there. Rook takes, f4, rook d8, bishop c1. Rook g6, rook a e4, rook g3, bishop b2 guarding the pawn. Now we've got the bishop really passive. We call bishops like these big pawns because that bishop on b2 may as well be a pawn the way it's guarding those two pawns. Black says, ah, I'll play king e7. This knight is really powerful. 
This bishop is really weak. Good knight against bad bishop. Rook 4, e2. B5. King g1. King e6. Now the black king is in a really good square also. Stockfish says king h2. A4 blocking those pawns in to block in the bishop. White just keeps waiting. Black says, I don't, I don't need to win right away. A lot of my students, they get to good positions like this and say, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And the answer is, well, sometimes you can't win right away. You just have a little, have a little patience and make your position a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And eventually your opponent will run out of things. So here White's simply saying, show me you can win. I'm just going to move my king back and forth. Black says, all right, I'll keep making my position better. King g1, knight e7, repositioning the knight now. Rook f2, he decides not to move the king. Knight d5, hitting these two pawns. Rook d1, pinning the knight temporarily. Rook b8, getting out of the pin. And now something's got to give. One of these two pawns is going to go. Rook to d4. Knight takes c3. Stockfish gives bishop c1. Now the interesting move, rook g8, I guess getting ready to push these pawns and open up an attack on g2. King h2. Knight back to d5 again. And now already they're going to sacrifice this pawn just trying to open up lines. Pawn checks. Pawn takes. He says, yeah, but I get a pawn too. f4. Well, White is attacking that pawn three times. Can he take it? Well... If he takes it with the bishop, rook takes a3, and here comes this passed pawn again. So the engine suggests <clears throat> maybe just rook h6 check, getting the rook behind the pawns. King takes. And now it says rook h7. b4, here come the pawns. Rook takes f7. b takes a3. Heading in, rook checks, knight e3, bishop takes, rook takes. We're just showing you, now finally black has gotten, you know, black has, um, no longer has the good knight against the bad bishop, but in return he's got all these monster pawns and extra pawns on the board. Stockfish says minus 8.9, you get the idea. All right, again, back to the game. We're looking at what happens if knight takes, rook takes. So we've been looking at f4. And we could go through different lines again. But let's look at some of the other defenses as well. There's rook to e4, rook a, e4, and bishop f4. Okay, um, rook a, e4. All right, so in this position, now this rook is only guarded once, but if the pawn disappears, it can be guarded twice. So here, black says, play f6. Black could also play the interesting move, knight d6. All right, when you look at moves like that, sometimes you have to look at what happens if he takes these two pawns for the exchange. But the reason the engine doesn't like knight d6 is not because a, a pawn takes knight, or, it's just simply he'll, he'll trade this pawn for, the, for this pawn, and then his bishop's a little bit better. So knight d6 is a candidate move, but the engine wants to play f6. f6, and now he's threatening to take the pawn. If the bishop goes to f4, black could try to remove the guard with g5. Engine says, no need to do that. Just play king here first. a4. Now the knight d6 trick since the rook can't take on h4. Let's show you what happens if he tries to take the knight. Pawn takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes. Pawn takes pawn, rook back to e8, and now black's threatening g5, bishop d6, king e6, and then picking up the pawn. White's kind of desperate here. They suggest g3, g5, and now bishop d2, king e6. This pawn is going to be a goner. King g2, king d7, king f3, king takes c7, and Black's up a full exchange and winning. All right, back to the start again. Knight takes, rook takes, rook a, e8, f6. So we're looking at f4. So 
King F7. Just waiting again. Here's that bad bishop. Where does it go? How does it get in the game? He can't play bishop e3 because it loses the e-pawn. Bishop c1. Black plays b5, taking away all these squares. Also getting ready to block the bishop in on the queen side. Rook d1. Rook's belong in open files, but it will cost him a pawn if, if black uh, plays it carefully. And of course, Stockfish looks ahead and says, c6 is my best move. Not a move I would probably find very quickly there. It says white has nothing better than to go back and guard his pawn now. a4, blocking this pawn on white on a dark square so that it blocks in the bishop again. Rook 4 to e2. Knight g3, hitting the rook. Rook e3, knight f5. Rook e4, just waiting. And now here we go with that knight d6 idea again. Oops, no, black says, now the engine says he likes to just grab the open file. King g1, rook d5, hitting the pawn this way. Not sure why that's better, but we'll just play some moves. King g f2, knight g3, rook 4 e3, f5, allowing this pawn to be a pass pawn, but giving the knight a beautiful square in the middle of the board that they that the bishop can't attack. And now already they're saying white should just sack the exchange for the knight and the pawn. If he doesn't, let's, what else could he do? Let's say he does nothing here. Let's say he plays king f3, rook g6, king f2, king e6. The king's a very good blockader of the pass pawn. King f3, knight e4, look at that monster knight. Now he's giving g4, pawn takes on passant. Let's say he doesn't do that. Well, he is threatening rook checks, king at e2, rook takes check. But what could he do to stop that? Let's say he tries to stop it by guarding the pawn. Rook checks. King e2. Knight checks. Pawn's guarded through the rook. And minus 9, the position's falling apart. All right, we keep going back to the game and showing you all these end games where the good knight is beating the bad bishop. And we're just trying to train our brain to look at patterns of, you know, what's good. Notice that black is being very patient here. He's not trying to win everything right away. So we were looking at the pawn takes and the rook here. Let's look at rook here again. F6 right away. Again, he thinks F4. This is the line we just looked at. King F7, we just did this. All right, let's look at something different. Um, let's say after F6, he tries to guard it with the bishop instead of the pawn. Now we've got this knight D6 stuff again. We already saw that on pawn takes when he wins the exchange, the pawn on the c7 isn't going to be quite fast enough. It's the line you always want to look at, but the problem is this rook on e4 doesn't have any great moves. If he goes back to guard the pawn, then knight c4, and this pawn is weak, if he tries to save it by pushing it up, black says, let's remove the guard of the bishop. Bishop goes back, thanks for the pawn. And let's say for the sake of argument that white does a bad thing and trades everything off here. Not that he has anything better. Pawn takes. Let's say he says, oh good, at the end. Does he want to take with, oh no, he want, well he could take with a knight and hold this pawn. Or he could take with the pawn. It's about, they're both about minus four. Let's take with the pawn just for the fun of it and see what's going to happen. Bishop takes here. Looks like, oh, white's getting back in the game. Now the bishop's winning all the pawns. Black says, oops, I'm going to sack a pawn and get a passed pawn that you can't stop. Pawn takes, a4, white says, what do you mean I can't stop it? There's my bishop right there. Pawn here, and now if he lets the pawn go one more, he won't be able to go to b2. So he has to take it. Knight takes, now he's like, oh, let me get my kingside pawns rolling. Black says, I know how to win this. If, uh, I don't know, what could he do? g4, g takes h4 with the isolated pawns. c4, king g3. Knight d4, a little trick here. If he takes, he has connected past pawns. Says white should play king g4. Let's take the knight just to show you. Pawn takes, pawn takes. King f3, king g7. Let's say king e4, d3, king e3, king h6. White says, I got to get these pawns rolling so the king can't catch them. King h5, f5. And it's like, oh good, he can't get back. What's he going to do? Black says, oh, Black says, I blundered. 
So let's go back and move. Yeah. Yeah, I see Stockfish. Stockfish says, oh, I didn't see that White could do this. All right. So we now see that uh, Pawn takes. Stockfish says, why would you take back, Dan? Force of habit. You should just play C3 and get a queen. Dan's like, oops. Okay, sure. Pawn takes pawn. Draw. C3. Resigns. Back to the start again. All right. So knight takes. Rook takes. All right. So let's look at bishop to f4. All right. So bishop f4. Well, that gives the bishop something to do. But now, again, this rook is not guarded. And now f6 again is a pin, threatening to just take the pawn. And what can white do? Well, if he guards it with the rook, we've already kind of looked at this a little bit. King f7, I think this transposes into the rook ae4 line. King g1, knight d6. And if the rook goes back, knight b5, hitting these pawns. Bad news. Um, on king g1, knight d6, if he plays rook to a4, now we remove the guard with g5. Things are getting bad. Stockfish suggests the strange move, rook to a1. I don't think I'd find that move in a million years. Rook to a1 is the best move? Oh, I guess just getting out of the pin so you could threaten the knight. Okay. Makes some sense. But again, it's dead lost. Rook a1. And then it says, save the knight, hit the pawn. How does he save the bishop? He could save the bishop and try to hold the pawn. Black, it actually suggests black should just play f5, threatening f4, blocking that bishop and making it bad on that side of the board. That's pretty funny. So it says white has to play this to stop that. And now black's just going to cash in over here with knight takes c3. All right, again, black's just dominating this endgame if you take that bishop. Back to the game. Knight takes e6. We're starting to see why it's a bad move. Rook takes bishop f4 f6 and now stockfish says don't transpose play king to g1 be patient king f7 bishop h2 thank you for the pawn maybe i can win it back king says gives me something to do to guard the pawn g3 trying to break up the pawn so that maybe the pawns the bishop will have some future g5 black says no thank you a4, just kind of waiting. C6, getting ready to play B5. King F1, here we come, B5. Rook B1, trying to pressure that pawn. Knight D6, guarding the pawn and hitting the rook. Rook G4, hoping for a chance to win the H pawn. Black says, I can just guard it. White says, I don't have too much to do. King G2. And now black again is waiting. Something like king f5 or rook h7. Let's see, did he likes rook h7 better? All right, we've got rook a1. Threatening pawn takes followed by rook takes here. Knight c4 guarding the pawn. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And now white says, I need to sacrifice the exchange and get a pawn. Because that knight is way too good and my bishop is just terrible here. So he, rook takes, pawn takes, rook takes a5, pawn takes, bishop takes, rook c6 guarding that pawn, rook a8 trying to get back in the game, e4, rook checks. Black says, would you like to trade? This would be a terrible trade for white. Stockfish says that would be a terrible trade for white. Rook d8. Rook a7 coming down here for the queenside pawns. Rook checks again. King e7. He says, how are you going to guard that pawn on g5? What black says, you could have it. Rook takes g5. Rook takes c2. And now it gives the strange move. Bishop h4 threatening a discovered attack. Black says, no, thank you. White says, but I can keep checking you. Black says, I can go to a white square. Rook checks, king e7, bishop f4, rook takes c3. Now black has a passed pawn on a c file, two isolated passed pawns. 
rook checks, king f6, h4, rook c8, rook takes e4, king f5, hitting the rook, threatening removal of the guard, f3, and now the interesting move, rook b3. Hmm. That's interesting because rook takes c4, doesn't remove the guard. Let's see what happens when rook takes c4. Rook takes c4, rook b4, skewering the rook to the bishop and forcing the trade that'll win the end game. Okay, clever. Okay, so he doesn't want to take, so he just guards the bishop. Black says, all right, but now I have a passed pawn. If white plays rook c4, then we still have that pin again, pinning the, skewering the rook and the bishop. So rook checks, king f6, rook e2 to stop the pawn, rook checks, King F2. See, we're no longer in <clears throat> we're no longer in good good knight versus bad bishop endgame. We've now cashed in and we're in up the exchange endgame. King F5, rook e4, rook c8, bishop g5. Notice black's being very patient. C4 blocking the rook from coming to that square. Rook checks. King e5. King e3, white's trying to get some counterplay. Rook c6, rook f8, rook b1, bishop checks, king e6, <clears throat> king e4, c2, rook g8, black's about to win the bishop for the pawn. Rook checks, king d4, <clears throat> black says I'm in no hurry to cash in. King f5, bishop g5, <clears throat> c3 torturing him, king d5 hitting the rook, rook c7, <clears throat> king d6, rook c4, white says, gee, maybe I can get a draw, black would say, no, can't do that. If he does play king d5, then just rook takes h4, and he can't take with the bishop because it's overworked watching the pawn, that's why white doesn't play that. White plays rook f8 check, king g6, rook checks, king g7, and now h5, but that pawn's going nowhere. Rook checks, he can win the bishop anytime he wants, king e7, rook checks, king e8, rook a1, Stockfish is like, I can cash in. Now he's, th he's threatening mate, king d8 hitting the rook, rook f7, would you like to trade? If you don't trade, we might mate you. Rook checks, king h7, rook c6, rook checks. It's getting near the end here. Rook take, rook in the way, rook takes, king takes. Rook f5, threatening to take off the bishop. Bishop e3, let's just take off all your pawns and then we'll win the bishop. f4, rook h1, and now we see mate in 10. All right, you get the idea. If it wasn't the good knight against the bad bishop, what... White had to sack the exchange and go into a losing endgame. Wasn't trivially easy. He got it. But again, as I said in the video, knight takes, rook takes. Boy, that looks bad for White. And thanks, Dave, for suggesting I can make a whole video showing why is this bad for White? Doesn't White get rid of that bishop that was going to harass the rook? And the answer is yes, he does. But he's out of the frying pan into the fire. And we have the traditional good knight against bad bishop endgame. And you just saw a bunch of examples of my 3500 buddy Stockfish13 showing you how black's good. White can do this or white can do that or white can try different things. But it, unless Dan makes the wrong move like I did in that one line where I accidentally took the pawn instead of going c3. If I actually follow the moves that Stockfish is telling me to play, then it's winning for black. All right, so if you've never seen Good Knight Against Bad Bishop, uh, this was an end game kind of expounding on my, you know, video a couple weeks ago of 20-minute uh, exercise number four, which used this position. And I had guessed that uh, White would play Rook F4, and in the game, Nepo played Rook F4. And because Nepo listened to me, he eventually won the Candidates Tournament. He'll be playing Magnus Carlsen for the World Championship in November. Well, maybe it wasn't because he listened to me, but it sounds good anyway. All right, so tell your friends about our video channel. Pass the word. That's the only way we can become viral is if you viral it to your friends.
If you want to like the video, that's great too. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that's great too. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.